And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Just thinking about tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. That has nothing to do with this game at all. It's tomorrow. If you look at the Stark box with those two symbols on it, biological and nuclear. Yeah, this is a game in the future, the not so quite distant future, in which it is up to you as a world leader to depopulate Earth so that it is livable and again. Yeah, that's what the game's about. As an aside, I did a paid preview for this game. Doesn't affect how I review it, but thought that should be out there for you. But let's get in and look at how the game plays. Here's the world of tomorrow. Each area of Earth starts with these exact number of people in it. So for example, you can see here that in uh, North Africa we start with eight of the blue pawns. The different colors are kind of to just basically differentiate between the different people. There's going to be several main players in the game, depending on the number of players. Uh, there will be uh, someone controlling the United States, someone controlling Russia, someone controlling China, somebody controlling India, someone controlling the EU, and someone controlling the Arabs. And so each of those groups, the other ones are considered to be minor players, and you see them all scattered across the board uh, in Central America and Canada and such. And um, the each of these pawns stands for 70 million people, and the problem with this that this game is uh, seeking to address is the fact that there is way too many people. And so you are going to be moving this counter down altogether. Every time people are killed, this counter is going to be moving down this track, which goes on three different levels, till it gets to this smiley face over here. If you don't get to that smiley face, then everybody loses. And you can see the threat level is different depending on where the which level the marker is in. And depending on which person's killed determines how far the marker moves. So anytime someone from Russia or United States moves, it moves three. It's not saying that those people are more important, I suppose, but more that there's a more of a global impact if somebody from China is killed than say someone in Canada. Uh, so that's kind of a cooperative feature of the game, but each player then is going to be given a set of cards. Uh, these cards show military, espionage, cyber, nukes, and biological, and then each player also has one card that's just for their country. For example, Russia has desolation. Um, the close society is for China. Peaceful oversight is for the EU. Secretary General, no, sorry, Secretary General is for the EU. India is peaceful oversight. Terror is from the Arabs, and the CDC is from the United States. So you each have a special card. Each turn of the game, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn over an event card. You're going to draw eight event cards, and if you haven't won the game uh, by the time these eight event cards are done, then everyone's lost. When you turn over the event card, there's three events on it, depending on which level the threat is at this point in time. So you read that event, there's something that will happen possibly uh, from this event. Sometimes it gives a, a goal for all the players to do. Then each player is going to secretly pick two of their cards and put them face down. And then turn order is going to be established. Now in this game, China starts with control of cyberspace. But control of cyberspace can switch as the game goes by. Switching is kind of an odd thing. When you uh, control cyberspace, you're going to put one of two tokens on it. Uh, the one token shows a red key on the other, and one shows a yellow key on, on the side. So you put one, and that's kind of control. When someone tries to steal it from you, they're going to show a, a token of that type. And then if it matches the type that's there, they have captured cyberspace. If not, then if someone else tries, they well, they know what the color is then. So the first person coming after it has a 50-50 chance. And so people can take cyberspace. Controlling cyberspace lets you, you can use this to either draw a card or steal a card from another player, these strategy cards, and I'll talk about those in a second, or determine the turn order. If they do not determine the turn order, then the EU determines turn order 
and basically they just say, okay, uh, EU is going to go first. Then EU plays a card, then they'll say China goes next, and then so on and so forth, and they'll pick the turn order for each turn. So either the person with cyberspace or the EU controls turn order. When it's your turn, you can either play a card or pass. Some cards can be played as... Uh, defensive measure, so you don't have to play a card your first time it's your turn, or even the second time it's your turn. Military cards allow players to capture minor regions around the board. When you do a military card, you'll do a certain number of tokens, and if other people have played military cards, they can try to uh, use their tokens. Tokens are essentially how much strength you are, and tokens are taken out one for one. If you capture a minor uh, territory, uh, as the levels go down, you're going to draw more cards, and even at the end of the game, you can draw more of those strategy cards, so that can be useful. You can capture uh, territories that other people have by attacking them with a the military card, and basically it's just a measure of control. I've already mentioned cyber cards. That's where you try to take control of cyberspace. Then there's nukes. Now, nukes sounds terrible. It sounds like a horrible thing. But in the essence, nuke is not so bad. What you do is you take, well, okay, and, and relatively speaking, what, you pick a territory and take someone out of that territory. And then you also take out one for every five people who are left. So there's six people left, so one more would be taken out. When you use a nuke token, let's say Russia is the one who nuked, you'd place a token there. At the end of the game, wherever you're going to lose three points for each of these uh, markers that you have in your territory, but the person who launched the nuke also will lose three points. Uh, the rule book says it's used as a revenge measure and isn't really great at getting you points. Biologicals is the most deadly weapon in this game. There are many biological weapon cards, Bloody Apple, Dr. Brown, Silent Night, you know, etc. These cards, players are going to draw a certain number of them at the beginning of the game. You can use the biological card to draw two more, or you can use it to play one of these. Now, when you play one of these cards, you will place this card in an area. At the top, it tells you how many people it kills in that area. So this kills two, this kills one, uh, this one here kills one out of every four people, this one kills one out of every three people immediately. After you do that, so let's say, for example, I decide to play it in this central region or the upper region of India. So here I play the bloody apple, which gets rid of one. Then there's the possibility that it will spread. The possibility is on a die roll of one, which is highly unlikely, but I would roll for each region next to the region I put in. So I roll for South India, I get a six, I roll for the Arabs here, fine. I roll for the this area here, and I roll a one. So three people die, that's what it says here. Uh, three people die in the territory. I roll for the China region above it. I get a two. I roll for the China region over there, a three. I roll for this over here, a two. So I'm fine. But each of these cards is different. Perhaps you have one that spreads on a one to two, but kills one person. Or this one spreads on a one to three and kills one person. This one spreads, uh, this one doesn't spread at all. This one here spreads into one to three and kills one out of every three people. Biological weapons are very dangerous and can kill a lot of people on the board. Players have an espionage card, and if you pick this as one of your two, you can cancel a biological attack, terror attack, or someone else using the espionage card. So these are good uh, for blocking. And then I mentioned that everyone has different special cards. There's the CDC that the Americans have that they can uh, use to stop biological attacks. Terror, you can mess with someone else's cards. Uh, Secretary General, Peaceful Oversight, Close Society, Russia can close its borders, desolation, etc. There are three decks of strategy cards, depending on what the threat level is, and there's different ways to draw these. You can control cyberspace, or by controlling minor countries, and each of these, when you get them, you might give it to another player, like this one here, which is minus two, uh, so there's different cards that you'll have. Sometimes they'll give you extra points in the game, and you can play this once per game. Play to block a biological or terror attack, as if you just played an espionage response. This cannot be countered by another uh, espionage card. Um, some of them give you special abilities. Some of them are worth a lot of points. You reveal them and do different things. So getting these cards is no small matter. And remember, the cyberspace card lets people steal them from others. At the end of the game, you're going to refer to this to see if, well, first of all, you have to get that marker down to the smiley face. Then you will get points for how many of your people are left alive. So the China starts with a whole pile more people than everyone else, so each of their people left alive is one, while Russia's are worth five each. So if they manage to keep all three of theirs alive, that's worth 15 points. 
You also get points for surviving pawns and miners. Um, you get points for every two pawns that you've killed. You get points from your strategy cards, and then you lose points for the nukes that you had launched against you or launch. Person with the most points is the winner. All right, a couple things to talk about tomorrow. I think the, the element, the elephant in the room is obviously the theme itself. Some people are going to flat out refuse to play this game. I cannot blame them. This is a theme that should be abhorrent to people in a sense. I mean, it's nothing that no one aspires, I hope, to be someone who is killing 70 million people a pop and launching biological, nuclear, and conventional warfare across the globe. Although conventional warfare, uh, to some degree, is already in lots of games like Risk, Access and Allies, etc. So uh, I think the conventional wisdom, but it's that biological thing and the fact that you're doing it and quartering the glee. So the, I mean, this game is a little hard to wrap your mind around theme wise because you're destroying Earth and it's kind of silly fun. That's really what the game is. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I find the fact of obliterating Earth silly fun, but that's where it is. So really, that's up to you as you watch it to look at it and say, does that theme bother me or not? For some people, they look at it as satirical, no big deal, let's just play it and see what happens, you know, haha, -ha, whatever, or just play the game. And some people, that's gonna bother them. So that's the theme. So theme out of the way, how does the game play? And the fact is, not very well. Um, it's, I don't mean to be punny here, but the game is very sterilized. What I mean is, I mean, I played the original um, prototype and it was there was lots of stuff in it. It was brimming over the place. This is like a super streamlined version of that prototype and they almost too streamlined it. The only really effective way to destroy people is through biological attack. There's no reason not to put biological attacks on your enemies. Yes, the game comes with the veneer of diplomacy, the let's beat the person in the lead type thing. And so that just means that each turn someone else is getting hit with a new biological attack. Cyberspace, the whole 50% guessing is such a, it's so annoying. It really is. Because it plays this dumb meta game where it's like, who's going to be the first person to go after cyberspace? Because the first person only has a 50% chance of getting it. The second person has a 100% chance of getting it. And meanwhile, the person with cyberspace has a pretty powerful thing. So it's, I don't know, that whole 50%, if there was a way to kind of deduce what it was, but there's not. The biological stuff, total randomness everywhere. That die rolling, you don't know what's gonna happen. The event cards, total random. And they'll give you like a thing, they'll say, the first person to bomb this gets extra points this turn. So what does everyone do? They go and they bomb that. So ah, uh, in the end of the day, it just doesn't fit as a game. I see what they were trying to do, and uh, game-wise. Uh, I, I see where it was going, but it just feels like, eh. You're gonna play it pretty much the same way each time, with the only differences being the event cards and the um, uh, the, the different die rolls and the biological cards that you'll get. The game doesn't have a lot, of, I mean, you have cards to pick, but since nuclear warfare is pretty much frowned on in this game, I mean, you don't wanna lose points, so that's kind of out. One of your cards simply cancels somebody else's, so it comes down to conventional war and biological war, and there's just that constant back and forth. I. I want it to like tomorrow, but it's just, it just doesn't have enough game in there for me. Now, I know some people sit there and go, oh, but the whole negotiation aspect. I try that, I love negotiation games, but it just, the mechanics don't back up that strong negotiation factor. So that's tomorrow, something that I won't be playing tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door!